Thank you. Thank you, Sergio, and thank you, Danielle, for putting together such a wonderful uh, experience. Uh, today, I'd like to go a little further, and this would uh, be a good talk to follow Giovanni's. Uh, the Bankart Repair is a very, very popular uh, in North America, actually all over the world. And uh, the question really can be, can this be modernized to deal with some of the critics and criticisms because of a bank card repair may not be effective in many patients or some patients. I do have disclosures of companies that I have been assisting with. We know that the glenohumeral dislocation is a common event. Uh, the anterior dislocation, we'll speak primarily of a traumatic uh, uh, Tubbs lesion that, uh, uh, that we are, know that they are re result of trauma, not necessarily because of looseness. And we have many good options, both arthroscopic and open. We can deal with this with generally soft tissue repairs, uh, which are very popular because they anatomically repair the lesions, whether we do it arthroscopically or open. And you've just heard on some of the more difficult cases or higher risk patients, the coracoid transfer, uh, the latter J, uh, would be an appropriate choice. I do think that the arthroscopic bank card repair is still very applicable, uh, particularly in people with small histories, initial dislocators, where there's not as much bony deficiency. But it also has been shown by Sugaya to be very effective with bony fractures of the glenoid rim. And I still think that a primary arthroscopic bank art repair has a high degree of success in both of these patients. We can see the problem well. We have very good view of the anterior inferior quadrant. We can repair the capsule and the labrum in an anatomic fashion. And we can work from sup inferior to superiorly to create a, an effective shift and thickening of the tissue to help protect against a recurrence. But we've learned over the years that recurrence may occur, and this may be the most common complication of a soft tissue repair. This graft is uh, one of uh, uh, um, Christian Gerber's, where he looked at the effectiveness of the latter J over more than the two years, but extending to five years. And the success of a soft tissue repair may fall short in individuals who continue to compete as time goes along. So maybe our two-year requirement for the literature is uh, insufficient to real accurately report. So I think when we look at soft tissue to repair an instability event, we know that first-time dislocators usually do not have significant bone issues. They can though with glenoid rim fractures, but the appeal of a soft tissue repair is that we are creating an anatomic repair. You've also heard of failures of ladder J's. This is the same with failures of bank cards. Age, the younger, higher activities, collision sports, glenoid bone loss, off track lesions clearly will present as an early recurrence after a bank card procedure. But I think when you look at five and 10 year results, you start wondering whether there's a capsular remodeling with combined trauma that can place certain shoulders at risk. So I'd like to present some ideas how to make your arthroscopic bank heart. We've learned about remplissage. You heard it briefly about the incorporation, posterior capsule infraspinatus into the hill sacs defect and we're starting to learn of the bipolar and the relationship of a larger humeral head lesion with a glenoid rim deficiency. So over the past 10 years, I've chosen about 25 patients with what I call moderate bone loss. This is between about 15 and 20% of the glenoid. Included in this were several seizure patients revision or failed prior surgeries. The patients at risk, I feel, have multiple dislocation events. In this case, many times more than five, 
There's sporting activity in my world, wrestling, collision sports. They may even experience an instability event while sleeping or have history of seizures. And many of them have had a failed previous surgery. The apprehension sign is very important. Mm -hmm. The load and shift can often reproduce crepitus in the office when you examine the shoulder. Imaging studies can demonstrate bony changes of tissue MRIs, although not often my practice can show soft tissue injuries like haggle or lateral capsular injuries. When we look at the CT scan, we can try to estimate the amount of glenoid bone loss, as well as with some difficulty for me, understanding humeral bone loss and where is that hill sacs lesion? How far is it from the rotator cuff insertion. When we look at a load and shift toe, we can appreciate the palpable effect with the arm in neutral, a little bit of abduction. We can see about posterior and inferior, and we could also place the arm in a more provocative position and mm -hmm. see if it locks out, but don't try 90 degrees, 90 degrees because subscapularis can limit that anterior translation in this position. I still prefer lateral decubitus. However, beach chair position can be utilized. Additional portals are important to access the inferior glenoid in a more perpendicular approach. I still uh, appreciate a bank heart procedure when there is extensive labral pathology. This some labral changes collision well. athlete has posterior labrum anterior labrum superior labrum often the complications of this surgery is that uh, they become a little bit stiff so i find that if you could do an arthroscopic soft tissue repair that extends around the glenoid this is extremely effective and does not often require bone augmentation it's my left shoulder, I'm lateral decubitus, I'm mobilizing the tissue. I may even see the axillary nerve if I go inferior enough. I prepare the glenoid. If there's a little bone in that tissue, I bring that up as well. I can put my anchors on my anterior articular cartilage or anterior inferior. I also utilize the posterior portal to grab the inferior pouch. You heard earlier about patients who have laxity. It's important to deal and reduce the pouch inferiorly because this becomes anterior with the arm in provocative positions. Multiple passes can be performed to allow for a mattress suture configuration. In the inferior quadrant, I do believe that mattress sutures are more helpful in keeping the knots away from the humeral head, especially with these stronger suture material. In addition, I'd like to repair the slap tear, which all of us know can make the shoulder a little stiff. But in this case, that's the protection from the recurrence. So these large labral damaged shoulders, I think do better with an arthroscopic bank heart repair combined with the superior labrum repair. Of the biceps anchor and restoration of the superior labrum. Try to resist pushing the biceps down and then you can extend your repair to that anterior labral structures that have been detached soft tissue injury. You can combine that with glenoid repair with the base of the superior labrum biceps complex. And to me, this is an anatomic type of repair that we're trying to combine with our patient. And I do not think that we need to consider uh, with the posterior, inferior, anterior, and superior repairs I don't think we have to consider the additional bone, even in a complex collision athlete. But here we have moderate bone loss. Looks benign from posteriorly, but from the anterior portal looking inferiorly, you can see how the humeral head likes to sit on the defect. 
And here I'd like to suggest that we consider either autograft or allograft. In this case, I'm presenting the clavicle autograft. Here is a patient, a left shoulder, lateral decubitus, and you can see the soft tissue anteriorly. In fact, you can see the sutures from the prior repair. And this is what I've included in the study. Harvested a portion of the clavicle, maybe eight millimeters. And with an anchor already in place, I am gonna shuttle a suture through my graft and secure it to the anterior glenoid rim. I will now start bringing my soft tissue over the top because I believe the capsule provides proprioception and an additional degree of stability to the graft. The graft can rotate this way, it cannot. If I have anchors below, on top and in superior to my graft. So here are my sutures now securing just at the upper edge of the graft. And so this creates an inflammatory response. It widens the glenoid, it centers the humeral head and allograft, autograft, clavicle, potentially the uh, iliac crest. These 25 cases now have up to nine year follow-up in my study. CT scans were done on nine, uh, did not usually do a repeat CT scan on success. One of my patients did recur, required a ladder J. One had graft displacement early because the fixation in the suture material I did not feel uh, was adequate. However, the infection rate was zero in the arthroscopic procedure. My nerve injuries were zero, and this is very concerning to me with ladder J's and certain transfers. But as you can see, stiffness is still part of the issue, which in some cases people can look as protective and others can say, I would not wish to do this in an overhead throwing athlete. This is the Eden Hibinet procedure that I'm talking and speaking about. It can be done arthroscopically, and my concern has been always the subscapularis issues, and particularly with patients who have recurrent surgery. I'd like to leave the subscapularis alone, treat the glenoid with widening with bone graft, and consider the capsular repair a part of the stabilization procedure. Again, these individuals return to their sports. In this case, they have some loss of external rotation. Maybe if I move them a little bit more quickly after surgery, I'd be better, but I am protected and I feel like I can understand what their recurrence risks are after a arthroscopic augmented bank card repair. Do we really need the sling? Well, a number of authors have now spoke about adding glenoid bone graft and avoiding the subscapularis and the conjoined tendon and the potential complications. And in these particular papers, including the NEAR award 2019, I do feel that they have found that adding bone to glenoid and doing a soft tissue repair without the conjoined tendon going through the subscapularis split can be worthy of stabilization without some of the serious complications that can occur with this. So I'd like to conclude, not only for me, but for many others, the bank card is an anatomic operation, can restore a capsule, can repair the labrum, and can be successful whether you choose arthroscopic or open procedures. The risk of bone loss, however, is for real. It is easier for us to measure the glenoid bone loss. The hill sacs lesion is being discussed, but I still don't think we have a very good way of preoperatively measuring that defect. And so it may be an intraoperative decision. Grafting the glenoid would seem to take some of the high risk patients and place them in a better category for short-term and long-term stability. In this case, in this study I'm presenting, I utilize the distal clavicle. I do feel that there are other choices. Iliac crest, in some countries, we're allowed to use allograft. We can, we can measure our defect, we can measure our bone graft, and we can adequately stabilize it. 
My comment to you all is beware of the subscapularis. I do not think, even though that extra scar tissue that we spoke about earlier today is necessarily what we want with our patients, and some of our patients have subscapularis complica complications that are serious and may affect the use of their shoulder, not only for their sporting events, but for continued surgery that may re be required even decades later. Thank you for your attention.